relatively small group today and that's okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get it started. We're already recording. Uh, so bear with me here as I share my screen. Give me one second. All right, so a couple of, of good topics here today. Uh, first and foremost, I don't think we have anyone on the call who hasn't been on this SIG meeting before. So I think we can skip this uh, new introductions. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add? Um, feel free, of course, to hop in there and do this as we're discussing. Um, and without further ado, I think, you know, let's just go ahead and dig in. And Oleg, uh, do you want to start, start us off talking about the, the Hackfest? Yeah, I could do that. Awesome. So, yeah, maybe it's better if I share the screen. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Okay, do you see my screen? Okay, so last meeting we had a quick discussion about your UX hackathon. Um, well, about whether we would like to do that. And uh, after some follow-ups with uh, um, uh, the SIG, uh, with documentation SIG and with advocacy and outreach, we actually agreed that we want to do that. And moreover, we set a date uh, and we announced the event. So if you haven't seen it yet, uh, there is a blog post on Jenkins.io, which basically describes how the event uh, would look like. Uh, we plan to, this is my screen? Yep, we said. Yeah, so we have uh, three main tracks at the moment, user interface, user documentation, and spread the word, uh, mostly about user stories, user experience, describing features, etc. Um, and for these uh, three tracks, we are currently con collecting project ideas. Uh, so I put uh, at least one topic uh, for the discussion uh, in the SIG. And here you can see that uh, we assembled a number of projects, including newcomer and the errors, like uh, some uh, features from uh, look and feel updates from our backlog. Also Jenkins accessibility. This is a topic which we described, uh, discussed last time. Uh, other newbie friendly issues. Um, we also had uh, a few contributors reaching out about the uh, dark theme for Jenkins. So what we did, we started the discussion about uh, support policy for themes, but in principle, we want to have it. Um, and uh, there are other projects which are currently under discussion, like system read permissions, and basically read on the web interface, and plugin manager credentials, UI, git plugin, etc., etc. So this is uh, the current list. This list is a moving target at the moment. So we will be adding items, maybe removing some items, updating descriptions, updating uh, Jira issues, so that uh, there will be more information on the list. Uh, but this is what we have at the moment. Regarding the event itself, um, it will be a five-day event. Um, basically, it's hop in, hop off. So it's not a hackathon when everybody just starts hacking full time. Um, basically, we invite people to spend uh, as much time as uh, they're willing to do. And we will be also organizing a number of events. And the one question uh, would be about uh, presenters from the UIUX SIG. Uh, so that we could uh, have uh, more uh, UI related topics covered today. So this is a quick introduction. Mm, the event is live. We already started getting uh, registrations. So by now we have more than 20 registrations and uh, counting. So let's see where we get, but uh, I think that uh, we have a good chance of running a pretty good event and facilitate, facilitating stories in our roadmap because the most of these items are somewhat represented in Jenkins roadmap at the moment. Okay, any questions? Any comments? Yeah, so just to summarize what else we did in order to support this documentation and uh, support roadmap in uh, principle, I submitted a pull request uh, to Jenkins IO, which extends the page a bit. Uh, so it adds more participants. And if you don't see yourself in this list and you would like to join, just do that. So it can be done via pull request. And we also started documenting uh, projects. So now there is a bit more description for look and feel updates, uh, Jenkins accessibility and 
user interface over whole. So basically these three items represent uh, the stories we already have on the roadmap. Uh, well, except uh, accessibility, which is a new one. Uh, one question. Yes. Uh, should we look for issues in from my plugins, for instance, which are re according uh, user interface, small enhancements and mark them somehow? Or? Uh, yes. So if we go to the um, current version of this page, so mm -hmm. basically everybody is welcome to submit their project ideas. And then we will somehow factor them and uh, uh, show them on this page. So here you can see, for example, there is a query for a uh, dark theme. Mm -hmm. Or, well, let me just open uh, the actual version of this page because uh, there were some edits uh, in the pull request. Uh, it's here. It takes a while. Okay, so here, for example, we have uh, Jira Apex for look and feel updates, Jira Apex for accessibility. We also have a general query for new camera friendly issues. Mm -hmm. uh, for, and right now, this query shows something like 13 issues. I still need to scrub them, but at least uh, there are some relevant ones. Uh, so the first thing you could do, you could just uh, put um, issues for plugins there. And here, for example, warning Sanjay plugin, enable the responsive option for all data tables. Mm -hmm. So it already got there. And if you just create issues, tag them as user experience, UI, UX, UXC, front end user experience. So I just did the best effort to match labels. Uh, yeah, they will be there. If you want to have something more major, you can just uh, suggest a pull request and uh, add a topic here. So we still have uh, two weeks uh, to process uh, these pages and to improve them. Uh, but in principle, if you have an idea of doing something major in your plugin, uh, we can just uh, put it as an additional project, put some documentation, and that's it. Okay, any other ideas, comments about this page? What's the most effective way to get a longer list? Of, I mean, we've got 13 issues, which is obviously not a lot. I mean, oh, well, actually, it's quite a good number if we take big, um, yeah. big initiatives. So, the, uh, the best way to discuss them, uh, everyone is welcome to suggest project ideas in this Google Doc. And basically, yeah. you click here and you get a Google Doc where you have published ideas and also ideas under discussion. Uh, okay. So what you can do, you can just uh, put uh, your ideas to this list and that's it. So we will uh, have the discussion maybe in chat and eventually either publish it or not, but hopefully we will publish it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So definitely we need more tasks. I'm not sure whether we need more projects because for example, system read permission uh, is a big project. Mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, is, no, uh, I, I agree, tasks is more what I meant than projects. <coughs> yeah. And there is nice also give uh, people a lot of stuff to choose from because then there's more chance that somebody will see something that catches their eye and their ability level, let's say. Yeah. Also, yeah, there is uh, tables, uh, to diffs uh, migration. So what we uh, uh, were discussing in the chat and the pull requests uh, today, so basically I have uh, uh, well, uh, crowd testing. Hey. Okay, uh, but yeah, we'll get to there. So I just added it to the list so that uh, we can discuss it. Okay, any other feedback? Well, big thanks for putting this together. I mean, this is a big deal, obviously, for what we're doing. I mean, hopefully uh, we'll get a lot of work. And I mean, if we're lucky, we'll get a couple of people that keep on working on it after the hack first as well, so. Yeah, fingers crossed. Has, it, has anyone signed up yet? Uh, yeah, uh, we have more than 20 registrations. 
And uh, speaking of people on this call, I guess it's only me who registered. And, and the, uh, the most of these 20 people are not usual suspects. Oh, Vlad uh, has, uh, has also uh, registered. So yeah, uh, yes. two people on this call. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that we can uh, get uh, a good number. So what we have as a kind of target for us is uh, 50 contributors. Uh, well, basically it's exactly a number of t-shirts uh, we have secured for now. Uh, but uh, if uh, luckily we get beyond that, we will also uh, see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, 20 registrations, you will never know how many contributions you will actually get. So we will keep pushing the event uh, and yeah, hopefully it will be a good opportunity to uh, just get together in the community. Like we did it, for example, for Java 10 plus hackathon where we had uh, a lot of different conversations. Uh, it was the first time when some contributors uh, met each other, even virtually, because in 2018, uh, there was no practice of uh, regular video calls. Now with special interest group meetings, et cetera, we have probably a lot of meetings in the community, uh, but uh, yeah, in 2018, it wasn't a case. So maybe now we can uh, have even more community bonding. So if you have, yeah. Oh no, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, another thing we are planning to do, which is not reflected on this page, is uh, explicitly highlighting that uh, we invite people to do UX testing, including web UI and documentation. Mm -hmm. So basically participants will be able to just do some testing, uh, report issues, and it will uh, count towards uh, uh, the hackathon contributions. So we won't be requesting uh, on the GitHub uh, changes. So how, do we kick something like this off with uh, like a session, like a video call or a, or, or a recording or how, how's, how do these yeah. things normally work? So, uh, yeah, we have some discussion. Again, uh, let me switch to the planning doc because uh, we have a tentative plan there. So we started assembling uh, different events. Uh, yeah, this page is getting a bit long, uh, but yeah. So May 25th will be um, our opening. Uh, we have a confirmed session for 1 p.m. UTC. Right. Uh, so they we will basically just say hello, do some overview about uh, how to contribute, how to record your contributions, etc. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to have a kind of uh, opening words uh, for all stories. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, for documentation, we have it confirmed with Mark. For user interface, uh, yeah, it, it's actually a good question. So if somebody is interested uh, to just uh, do some introduction, 10 minutes or so, uh, it would be appreciated. I mean, I'd be happy to give a short talk about where it's all going. It's just like five, 10 minutes, you know, like the kind of vision. If people are, if you think people are interested in that, I mean, but I'm I not going to give, I'm not going to give the introduction, you know, this is how the UI works. I think there'll be people that are much more qualified to do that than me. Yeah. Well, it would be great. Yeah. Mm, so, and we could ha have some. And I'll also uh, plug the SIG, obviously, in that. Where is it going to? I mean, I'll. Uh, mm -hmm. so it'd be really nice if, you know, out after this, you know, three, four, five people become, you know, regular members of the SIG or, you know, regular contributors. 10 or 20 would be even better. But, you know, mm -hmm. if we got three, four regular people, that would be a big win. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, right. So it's a, an opening session. Then yeah, at 1 p.m. on the 25th. Then. Yeah. Oh, let me block down my calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll send uh, the invites. So Thank it's you. just the development of, uh, of the basically yesterday and today. So it's still a kind of moving yeah. target, but uh, all the meetings will be scheduled and announced this week. So I guess we also confirmed a uh, hands-on session with Ule at 3 p.m. UTC, is it right? 
Okay, so basically it will be handled in the form of a developer meetup. So we had a great uh, blog about uh, creating a fancy UI for reporter plugins. So I think we could just uh, reuse this content as a kind of uh, overview session. And if somebody is interested, we can have more such sessions. So the whole idea is basically to have a hug fest. So if anybody wants to have a developer meetup or whatever, we can do that. Or just show and tell for a particular topic. So for example, we plan a session about uh, migrating plugin documentation to GitHub. Yes, again, uh, but uh, yeah, we will do this session. And I also uh, asked the team about system read permission. So whether we could, uh, okay. So we just need to discuss the date, but in principle, we do this session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on. So if you want to present a particular story, uh, which is uh, related to user experience, uh, we can uh, schedule uh, this session during this week. And uh, if you would like to propose something, just to do that. Right, so we can kind of make it into many conference if we have the speakers that want to do that. Well, that's not an intent. I would rather prefer developer huddles. So yeah, okay. Well, maybe workshop-like things or show and tell things uh, with open discussion. Yeah. Uh, but uh, doing a conference-like thing, okay, we could do Well, this. like an unconference then, maybe. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, does this format uh, work for you in principle? So, yeah, sounds great. I mean, let's hope that we get a lot of people that want to contribute. Well, um, maybe we'll do our best to do that. But yeah, we already get a number of contributors, and actually the timing is quite good. So, for example, for documentation, we have just uh, announced uh, JSON, uh, Google Season of Dogs. Uh, so there will be potent, uh, technical writers exploring Jenkins project and we okay. uh, have already got messages maybe from four of them, or maybe more. Um, and um, there we will also suggest this hack first as an opportunity to contribute. Uh, the same uh, for Google Summer of Code, uh, we also keep this option open. So if students want uh, to contribute, they are welcome to do that. And it's the main reason why we do it in the end of May before the coding starts. So that firstly we have uh, mentors and students uh, potentially contributing to this project. Mm -hmm. And it's a good opportunity for community bonding for them. Okay. And, yep. Just if you want to invite someone, uh, please do that. Is there anybody else that's worked on you with? within CloudBees on this, or is it mainly you? So, well, um, it's coordinated effort in the community team. Yeah. Uh, so what it means is basically me, Mark, Alisa, and Tracy organizing that okay. uh, in terms of just uh, doing all this backend thing. Uh, so I will be probably the main host for all the events. Mark is taking care of the documentation because he is a documentation officer. Same, Alice is taking care about uh, the events and the spread the word part, uh, including uh, Jenkins is the way website. Uh, and uh, for your UX, I would definitely appreciate uh, some help with uh, getting the thing running because yeah, it's a major topic. Uh, so having more contributors uh, would be great. Okay. But yeah, for me personally, I will be full time uh, this week on the event. Well, maybe except uh, necessary JSOC stuff, uh, but yeah, I don't plan any other events. Mm -hmm. And we already have a number of uh, reviewers. For example, thanks team, and probably we could get uh, more people here. Uh, so Felix, uh, he might be able to participate. Uh, and yeah, we would appreciate if there are more reviewers and 
are more contributors than six. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can just plan it so Felix is more or less 100% available for this. I mean, I think it makes more makes more sense to use his efforts during that week to sort of merge mm -hmm. PRs and then that he works on, you know, other UI related stuff. But yeah, so yeah. I, have, I have yet to go add my name on the list there, but I'm also planning to allocate some time at that point to, to be available for some design feedback and that sort of stuff as well as, as contributions are made. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's so great. Yeah, should be yeah. So we will keep growing uh, these teams, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, again, uh, when we were doing the Java 10 plus hackathon, uh, we had uh, almost 30 contributors in uh, total during this one week event. And I guess uh, here we have a chance of having uh, a lot more. Uh, I guess still less than 100, but uh, still a, a decent number of contributors. And we really want to have it as a kind of community get together so that, uh, for example, in your UX seek, um, you have a meeting uh, right in the middle of Hackathon on 27th, right? So, so for example, this uh, meeting could be used mm -hmm. for intermediate celebrations or something like that. What do you think? Just to bring people to this seek meeting. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's a good idea. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Now the doc sig will actually meet. I believe it's the Friday before. And so we will use the Friday before as our sort of get it launched. The 22nd, we will be in the doc sig there. So, okay. Well, we could still do a special meeting uh, during uh, the Hackfest. Oh, we should. Absolutely. I just uh, will also do pre preparatory work in the, that doc sig meeting, but absolutely we will do, we should do one during the week itself. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just putting things there. Mm -hmm. Anything else to be added? Uh, or are there any specific topics you would have, you would like to have? Because I can reach out uh, to contributors and see whether we could organize uh, additional developer meetups. For example, I have a topic about uh, developing from tent in Jelly Groovy. To be honest, uh, I would rather link a recording because we have some. Uh, but if we feel it's important to have this section, uh, this session live, uh, I will try to organize that. I'll probably run it on my own. Yeah, so on the on the front end development, are there things there that related to the the various initiatives that Felix is working on that should be shared for front end development? The the styling, or is that is that separate, Oleg? Mm, so uh, yeah, that's a good question. So we can have some introductory meeting. We have a presentation by Uli. But ah. this presentation by Uli doesn't uh, really cover the topics we put um, in this plan. Is that right, Uli? Actually, my topics are a little bit specific to plug in reporters and the special views in there. But okay. I think Felix's part is more in the in the other area, how to style the individual elements of Jenkins. Okay. So how to style uh, elements in Jenkins? For instance, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll uh, talk to Felix, but yeah, uh, next week. Uh, but uh, tell the connection item. So I agree that it would be useful. 
and maybe another topic uh, which we could clarify. Uh, so if we really do themes, uh, maybe we could uh, have a how-to guide about uh, creating Jenkins themes. But yeah, again, with all the disclaimers about uh, theme compatibility. Uh, so what we did, uh, we started the discussion about um, uh, theme support policy. Uh, uh, this is basically a dis te uh, text we discussed with Felix uh, and we, all, uh, we have already got some positive feedback. So too long did it read, uh, we just want to document the current state where we guarantee exactly no forward or backward compatibility for themes. And uh, we keep it as this uh, until the look and feel improvements are done. Uh, so this is uh, the current proposal. Um, and uh, yeah, we will be rolling out a theme effort on, uh, only if it's accepted uh, by the hackathon. So my um, question to you, Joe, Jeremy, and to others, uh, taking uh, that uh, this policy is published, uh, are you fine with putting more themes? Because we know that uh, it puts potentially compatibility at risk, but at the same time, the engine is already there. Could, could you rephrase the question, Oleg? I'm sorry. Okay, if uh, this policy is accepted and published by the hackathon, uh, are you fine with us facilitating uh, uh, theme development as potential topics for contributors? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not immediately opposed to that because I think that this this support policy um, out, outlines the parameters in a good way. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. I think, I think it was really important that we had this policy in place, and this is a great. Uh, guideline or series of guidelines. So, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. I mean, for me the same, I mean, obviously it'd be awesome if everybody just rallied around, you know, the new theme that we're creating overall. But I mean, I, I think the power of Jenkins is, you know, people are free to do and style it the way they want. And okay. yeah. So what Joe said basically. Okay. So, yeah, I'll tentatively at uh, how to create a uh, theme to the list. Yeah, well, probably it's me. I'm not sure. And by how to create a you mean with the simple theme plugin? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, as a part of this proposal, I'm going uh, to document usage of things uh, in uh, admin guidelines, because right now, if you go to um, Jenkins IO doc book, basically there is nothing about themes there and whatever. I will probably do a page, uh, add a page here. And uh, with all the policies, I will link it to simple theme plugin. So we will uh, be able to highlight this engine, but vice versa, uh, we will uh, just define all the policies. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, the plan. Any other comments, feedback? Because yeah, we already spent uh, 30 minutes. Um, so, if you want to proceed with other topics, I totally understand that. I think uh, we might need to just for for the meeting's sake uh, and for timing's sake. Sorry, sorry, was someone about to say something there? I don't want I don't mean to cut you off. Oh no, just I wanted to uh, uh, clarify. Does it make sense to uh, uh, popularize this uh, uh, hack fest uh, using different? channels retweeting and maybe on LinkedIn and related question. Uh, if somebody who doesn't have experience with Jenkins at all, does it make sense to ask those people to join and contribute to different areas or it doesn't make sense? Just one okay. opinion of community. So does it make sense to promote it? Definitely yes. Uh, any channel. Uh, yeah, we do some promotion on our own, but definitely more promotion wouldn't hurt. Uh, about newcomers, 
we explicitly say that uh, we invite everybody regardless of their experience. For that, we firstly create a new newcomer friendly stories. Uh, so there are some linked here. We will have more linked from other places. Uh, then uh, yeah, same for documentation. Again, there are newcomer friendly ones. Uh, we will also have a chat where everybody is welcome to come and ask. This chat has been already created, by the way. So if you want to join. And uh, yeah, in addition to that, uh, we are, as I said in the beginning, we will have UX testing um, as suggested item. Again, it's basically, it's an area where we would benefit from newcomers, especially user experience testing for installation guidelines, for tutorials, for installation, uh, for things like that. They, it's actually an advantage to be a newcomer. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely useful and uh, yeah, it's much appreciated if somebody contributes. Mm -hmm. And a related question, uh, does it make sense to ask companies who are currently using uh, uh, Jenkins and uh, entire CI, CD uh, infrastructure from Jenkins, uh, if they have any issues, for instance, documentation or related issues, or we don't want to approach different customers? It uh, definitely does make sense to do that. Uh, because yeah, historically, Jenkins is mostly a tool uh, used by professionals. And it also means that the most of our contributions come from companies, uh, well, as individual contributors or as company contributors, but uh, from people who want to, uh, who use Jenkins and who want to improve that. So, yeah, if somebody wants to contribute, uh, uh, it's a good opportunity to start. Uh, we know that uh, company contributions, uh, that, yeah, there is a lot of obstacles like, uh, let's say, a contributor license agreement. We don't have one, but still some uh, employees have uh, to approve contribution before joining. So for that, if they need help, they can reach out to us. And also we have some uh, things here which doesn't require you to write a code. So for example, uh, sharing your story, just posting in social media or um, uh, UI UX testing, you don't have to write code and hence you don't have to get permission from your company to submit this code in public. Fortunately, there is not so many companies in the world who require you to approve tweets or whatever. Uh, but yeah, there are some. Thank you. Okay. So thanks for your questions. And yeah, I guess that's all from me. So thanks for your time. And yeah, looking forward to this hack test. So it should Thank be you, fun. Oleg. Thanks, Oleg. Uh, I'll take the screen back for just a moment. And I've got a quick mm -hmm. share here. Um, let's see if I can get through this without coughing. I apologize if I need to go on mute. Um, all right, I've, so uh, we usually take a look at a, a design deck of sorts and look at uh, ongoing progress of some, some front end UI element styles. Uh, this week, it's gonna be a, a pretty quick and straightforward one. So linked here, we have some early iterations, and I do mean early, uh, on, on table styles for Jenkins. Um, so for a bit of context, because we have a couple of people on the call who, who weren't here last time, which is awesome, we link all of these decks and pretty much everything that we talk about on this document, um, which should be available on the UX SIG page um, for future reference. So if you ever want to go back and look at this stuff and this, uh, excuse me, this UI revamp initiative is, is outlined here if you want to check that out. So for today, uh, we're just going to take a look at, um, as I mentioned, some early table styles, the intended outcome here being, you know what, let me do this since I'm not on the big monitor, being to update Jenkins tables to use a more modern aesthetic, which can then result in a more user-friendly experience. So not changing dramatically the functionality uh, in keeping with what we've been doing in, in re recent weeks here, uh, updating styles, which does improve the experience, but not necessarily uh, in a deep way, but We'll, we'll take a look in just a moment at some examples. So some ideas, and again, these, these really are quite early still, uh, are that aesthetic improvements may include things like taller rows, like uh, taller rows, right? So more spacing as we've seen in, in the sidebar and in our typography, 
uh, adjustments to padding, implementation of our newly defined type styles and our newly defined color palettes to make things more accessible. Um, we also would like to try and implement some interactive states as we've seen we've established those in, in the sidebar work and things like that, possibly on uh, entire rows and tables which would create sort of a more consistent experience with some of the other elements that we're working on. Again, at this stage, these are just ideas. Uh, these are not uh, being implemented currently, but when we get there, of course, we'll share that and we'll talk about it like we always do. Um, so as I, as I say here, uh, we still need to do an audit, much like we did with button styles throughout Jenkins to see the wide variety of table treatments and table usages throughout the Jenkins interface. And that's gonna inform this work a lot but for this very quick update, for this quick deck, uh, we're just going to look at, at three screens. This is a screenshot of current table, right? Um, the, uh, the most visible table for a lot of people. Um, and this is, this next screen is if we were to apply some of the, the standard, um, excuse me, not standard, some of the uh, styles that we are trying to standardize throughout Jenkins. So adjusting spacing with some adjustments to our typography reflected here, uh, adjustments to hyperlink styles. Notably, these are not with updates to our icons, which is something we're aiming to do in the coming months as well, like we've talked about. Um, so not perfect. Um, if this were an interactive uh, prototype, we would be able to see interactive states here reflected so that things are a lot more clearly selectable when you interact with them, it's a lot clearer uh, how you're doing that, what's being done as you interact with the table. Excuse me, I think we got a comment here. Oh, uh, sorry, it was me. I just asked whether <laughs> you would go after green balls by default. So, so we need to we need to look at all of this iconography and things like that. Um, still, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, and click here. This is another another mock-up, just static for the moment, right? So applying, applying the type we've established, the colors we've established, uh, adjusting spacing, what could this uh, plugin table that we, that we are all familiar with look like with some of these very basic adjustments and uh, improving usability. So very early stages and much more detail to come in the coming SIG meetings on this, but I just wanted to share that. And does anyone have any thoughts or questions at this early stage on this topic? That, that is a beautiful thing that you have on screen right now. Um, I like that the extra, the better text over the title, uh, the name of the plugin. Thanks very much. For now, it's just a picture, right? I have to stress that. Um, so I appreciate that. But we're, we're going to see, you know, uh, the limits of, of what we can actually implement um, in, in tables. And it really comes back to how they're being used, which I don't uh, technically understand yet. So. So we'll, we'll see what we can do, but we definitely like to improve legibility, just general understandability of, of tables as they're used throughout the UI. Yeah, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that Plugin Manager UI is basically a separate project on the roadmap at the moment. And there is a number okay. of con contributors uh, uh, who change it a lot. Uh, shout out uh, to Daniel Beck, who basically reworked uh, all the layout there. So, I believe that changing of styles should be quite orthogonal, uh, but uh, if you want to, to change uh, the content at the same time, uh, then yeah, it might make sense to do some coordination. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's that's a great point. This is definitely just like a, a static example. Uh, and and of course, other initiatives are, are gonna include, um, you know, various elements that we touched throughout this project. But, but yeah, point taken, absolutely. Uh, what makes sense here for me is uh, to look into several plugins of what kind of tables are currently used. So because these tables you are showing are, are not a typical table from a plugin, I think these are some, yeah, they are using a table, but actually these things are not uh, what I think about a table. So normally you have tabular data, but this is some kind of detail information for the plugins. So mm -hmm. it would make sense to look or have some other plugins or look into some other plugins as well. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And that's a great point. Thank you. Um, that's something that we need to do as part of a, a table audit, right? Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thank you. The Good tables are very different, uh, difficult in terms of Stalin. Uh, we pass through the same on Jenkins IO. So for example, on Jenkins IO, we had many pages like, uh, let's say roadmap, which follow the table layout. So thanks to Zbigniew and other contributors who applied some magic so that tables can collapse, etc. So basically they still get flow layout, even though uh, there's still tables in HTML. Uh, so maybe something like that could be applied to the, um, I'm not sure. Um, but potentially, yeah, I, for, frankly, I'm not sure either, um, but, but we're definitely mindful of this and we'll see how far we can push the envelope to make them more usable in addition to styling and, and we'll let you know. Yep. Thank you. For sure. I think our next item here, um, uh, updating the SIG page. Uh, Oleg, did you add this one? Yeah, so basically we already reviewed it uh, during QIUX Hackfest. Mm -hmm. So unless uh, somebody objects, I would uh, like to get this ch change merged. Um, so there is already approval from Jeremy, from Tim, from Mark. Basically yeah. it uh, just adds uh, some more details. Yeah, let's go ahead. Sounds good, cool. yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. For sure. Do you want to speak to number five and, and six there as well? But... Oh, yeah. So oh, I don't always uh, add uh, topics, but when I do, I do a lot. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So yeah, if you don't mind, I'll uh, screen share again. Sure. Uh, maybe pass it uh, to Tim quickly. Just a second. Uh, yeah, I need to close tabs I opened in a while. Okay, so we have a pull request, which is related um, to replacing uh, uh, many tables in our layout uh, to divs. It's not a tables uh, Joe was talking about. We also use uh, tables to align uh, components on the layout. And basically it's uh, considered as bad practice, um, especially in terms of uh, accessibility and also because uh, layout is very fixed. Um, also it uh, makes it very difficult to modify that. And there was a lot long standing request from Josh Sorev uh, about uh, changing uh, from tables to divs. And just to provide some context, first time we discussed this topic was something like 2013 and 2014 in the developer mailing list. And since that, we have never touched that because it's considered to be extremely complex and potentially a break uh, But yes, here we are. So thanks uh, to Felix, uh, thanks uh, to team and other contributors, and uh, thanks to Joseph, we actually have a pull request, uh, which does a first shot of changing that. Uh, yeah, it's a massive change across the Jenkins web interface. So basically uh, replacing a lot of tables uh, which are used, uh, used to render layouts. Uh, this change is likely to be a breaking one. Uh, that's why we postponed it until the LCS cutoff. But the new LCS baseline was selected, so technically we can merge the NVIDIA. Um, and there is some ongoing discussion about how we could merge it. And basically there are two ways we discussed uh, over past day or so. So one way is to just land it before the hug fest. Um, and well, likely there will be regressions. So we will invite contributors uh, to work on that, to fix uh, these regressions. Uh, it will be a bit of a boilerplate, uh, but it will be more convenient for contributors. Another way is to actually do um, uh, crowd testing during the Hackfest. So have uh, several contributors invite more uh, to, uh, for this project. Um, and we can provide tooling, we can provide ways uh, to test that, but it would be a more conservative approach. So what I wanted to discuss here is basically to get feedback from the SIG and to see how we would like to land that. And the uh, team is still on the call, I guess, yes. So Tim, it would be great to know your opinion because you've been driving it a lot this time. I was muted. Um, yeah, 
yeah, both work. Um, mm -hmm. Just not sure of the quality of testing that we would get in depth um, during the Hackfest. Um, if we merge, I think if we merge it at the beginning of the Hackfest, then the version of core that people would be working off would have this in it, but it wouldn't be released. Mm -hmm. Um, which could catch some issues. Um, it's, m it's more likely to catch issues if people are working off of that. Um, we could have a bug bash and see and ask people to, to test it. Yep. Um, but we can do bug bash anyway. Yeah. So the challenge here that we will need to, to provide uh, guidelines how to, how to test that. For example, we did it for Java 11 before. Uh, we created a development branch, we set up incrementals delivery for them, we set up Docker delivery for that. But basically, during the Java 11 Hackfest, we had a branch uh, in the Jenkins core repository where we were integrating changes. And thanks to our CI CD environment, we were getting uh, versions after each merge. So we could do something like that. Uh, we will still need to document that, but in principle, it's possible. Mm, but yeah, you're right that it might be a bit more complicated. If we just merge the thing, of course, it will be easier. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what would be the consequences for users. Just to test it with more plugins, I guess. Um, the plugins that I have installed are all working fine. Um, there's always going to be insane plugins that are likely going to have issues. Um, yeah. So, yeah, for example, yeah, in Java 11 Hackathon, uh, yeah, I tried to find links. Uh, but we were coordinating it uh, through Google Doc. So we had a Google Doc where everybody was putting uh, what exactly they tested, which plugins, etc. Uh, and uh, actually, we got a uh, good number of contributions through that. Uh, same, for example, for JEP 200. When we were doing that, we again we were coordinating it through a Google Doc where every contributor was putting uh, the changes. Uh, yeah, it get yeah that's a wrong blog post. But if you have multiple contributors who are interested to work on this topic, uh, we definitely can create a framework for that, for comfortable testing and for collaboration. Uh, and hopefully we'll get some uh, contributions and test coverage out of that. Yeah. The thing I'm not most worried about, but quite worried about is if we do have big changes to the UI or semi changes to the UI during this hack fest is, just having to rework the PR to adapt to it, given that it already touches a large part of the UI. So it's a fair point. So your preference is basically option one. Uh, oh, yeah, option one or one dot. I mean, two is or... yes. Two is. Two, I mean, two works for me as well. I preference for one just because I don't want to have to rework, retest, and conflicts again and again and again yeah. just just because of how wide ranging it is i feel like java 11 is different is that a lot of the changes could be mainlined in java 10 um yeah, does the, the jack the jack B stuff may be more difficult but yeah so just to clarify in the case of java 10 uh, yeah we had a hug fest but uh, then uh, we had a feature branch maybe for something like three or four months uh, while we were gradually moving uh, our hacks to the main branch. Um, so here, yeah, definitely we would uh, prefer a faster process because yeah, if we assume that we want to merge it in uh, this LTS cycle so that it becomes available to LTS users in, users in September, uh, then yeah, we just have two or three months uh, to stabilize the DECA system. Uh, but still, uh, we probably don't uh, want to break it completely for weekly users. So if you have confidence that uh, the majority of plugins are likely to work, you could uh, merge it. Uh, if you don't have confidence by the Hackfest, I would rather go towards uh, option two so that we try to do crowd testing. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's matrix auth and SCM API plugins need merge and release. 
Uh, yeah, so most likely role strategy will also break. Well, I, I don't think it will, but I haven't, I haven't actually tested it because it's, I don't think it's part of the default um, uh, recommended plugins. No, we recommend matrix authorization right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so. I'll, I'll, give it yeah. a, I'll give that one a check, but I don't think it does just based on its UI, it's different. Yeah, so basically a role strategy plugin renders its pages on its own. But yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have something like five minutes left. Uh, but yeah, for the seek, uh, if you're interested uh, to discuss that, I think uh, this pull request is the best location. Uh, and I think we need to decide uh, within one week or so how we proceed. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, more more testing by anyone would be very useful to help us with that as well. Um, I think we've had, we've had a few people test it, but more is welcome. I did a mailing list post on it as well. Um, and the documentation updates PR as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So whatever way we choose, I think we want to add uh, that to the hackathon. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, the question is uh, rather yeah. uh, what exactly we will be doing there. There's, there's more work on top of it to be done as well. There was things that we aren't happy with, but they're just riskier changes and more work um, that we didn't want to leave in the scope of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. But yeah, uh, let's keep talking about that then. Yeah, uh, once it's merged, I think it will be a great improvement. So I tried it on uh, yeah for narrow screens, uh, well something less than one thousand pixels. It's a narrow screen in Jenkins. Uh, yeah, this uh, layout already gives a lot of advantages. And yeah, I'm not even talking about launching Jenkins on mobile phone. Though in principle it would be an interesting project. Well, this 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 makes it render um, a million times better on mobile. Just with yeah. no with with no effort really. It it just it just works on mobile. Mo a lot of things. Yeah, right. And the previous changes by Felix and the header also improved the situation. So mm. yeah, let's see. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Mm, oh, got four uh, minutes left. So. That last one may be pretty quick. Um, so mm -hmm. Oleg, I, I know you, you had added as a discussion point UX SIG logo and you shared some drafts of some concepts there. Uh, I could speak mm -hmm. to it real quickly just because we talked about it earlier. Yes. This is something that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and create something for us as well. And maybe work on a, a new iteration of your concepts as well in the coming weeks. So it may or may not be ready by the next SIG meeting, but this is something we can upload onto the the SIG page and makes a, a better impression when we share on social media or in other places and other venues uh, about the SIG. Um, so that might be all there is to say about that one, but do you have anything else, Oleg? I know we're, we're coming up on time here. Yeah, I think just a quick one. So yeah, if you want uh, to take a look at better examples, you can go there. I deliberately not showing them because most likely Joe will come up with something much better because he has spent just several minutes uh, and yeah, so right now we basically have a, a standard uh, Jenkins logo. Uh, I believe somebody at some point uh, uh, copy pasted uh, the, uh, this logo from uh, Jenkins web interface to Jenkins IO website. So the resolution of uh, this logo is, yeah, it's quite uh, small. So even here you can see the pixels. And when you post any link to UXSeq in social media, basically you get a huge log um, as a uh, as open graph, and it looks uh, well not very good. Be I think the default would be better just to be the Jenkins logo. Oh, no, it actually puts this logo because we. Uh, I know, but <laughs> just saying that the Jenkins logo might be a better default. Yeah, yeah. maybe. I think that's probably. <laughs> So we uh, applied some magic around that. So here, for example, yeah, open graph, it, it just uh, puts user GIF. So if you remove that, it will uh, put Jenkins logo. 
which is definitely a better option. But yeah, if we have something else, it would be nice. The open graph is what Twitter will pick up. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Slack, if you post it in Slack. So, for example, uh, I repost all the Jenkins blog posts in Slack. And when you wow. see cool images, so they come from Open Graph. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, this is a standard metadata. It's available on almost all Jenkins pages. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it'd be awesome to have a nice little logo. I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy, but anything mm -hmm. better than those two little men yeah. or people yeah so yeah one thing about logos and the other design uh, so they will be summer of design or something like that uh, so basically it's like summer of code but for designers uh, it's organized by whatever company um, so if you want to post some project ideas we could discuss uh, that maybe next at the next meeting okay but yeah, most likely we a bit late with it, um, but in principle, if you want to participate to in such programs uh, for design, we could do that. Because and yeah, one that, more. Are... Sorry. Sorry. Uh, no, I was just about to say we're at time for this for this call. Sorry. Go ahead, Oleg. Yeah, I also have nothing else to say. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your time. And sorry that I spent almost all your time today. Uh, but yeah. No, thanks for bringing stuff to the table. It's, a, it's appreciated. Um, and thank you yeah. everyone for your time and, and mm -hmm. great session. Yeah, big thanks for organizing the Hackfest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you.